So what the hell is the left trying to do? Are they trying to do... Are they just trying to make transracial a thing? So a UW Madison uh, teaching assistant, Kami, uh, Rabble Rouser, CV, some of you out there might know, I've definitely encountered uh, this person before in my cha on my channel, doing my channel, doing videos, uh, just doing lefty documentation in Madison and stuff like that. But basically, this human being, this transracial, multi-gendered human being of something or other is in trouble and under fire for pretending to be a person of color. So pretending to be non-white, basically, according to the college fix here. A white teaching assistant and graduate student at University of Wisconsin-Madison released two apologies for falsely claiming a variety of ethnicities um, <clears throat> this is another example, Jessica Krug. Yeah, this person right here tried to pass Zer self off as, you know, of color, so non-white, um, non-devil people. <laughs> um, you know. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. So this CV human being has issued a couple of, uh, apologies for this, but... It was for. It came after this medium article that goes into laborious detail. Someone has even more time on their hands than I do. I don't have any idea how to decipher any of this. But basically, yeah, after the Krug story came out yesterday, she was shocked. Apparently, what we're seeing here, like, oh, what caught my attention instead were the parallels between. Krug's story and that of someone I know. I have long suspected C.V. Vitolo, a Ph.D. student at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, of engaging in the same type of race-shifting and copious lying because all progressives do is lie 100% of the time, without exception. Uh, that is now has people enraged with Krug and which distracts from the important work and struggles of actual black thinkers both in and outside of the ac academy. So basically, CV claimed to be, like, Ethiopian and Latino or something like that. <clears throat> she claimed sort of like a reverse Nick Fuentes, it seems like. I mean, from my layperson's understanding of this, from, like, an outsider's perspective, that seems like what's going on here. And she's been doing this for, like, s semesters. But, yeah, this is her Twitter and it's like thinking, what? See if you can decipher this. Like I was trying to go through this chicken scratch, this academic gibberish, not colloquial rights. Thinking about how after fourth grade, mom started telling everyone we are Cuban and watching light slash ambiguous people be like, "quote This white woman is why no one trusts us." But feeling like colorism, we uphold and lean into to distance ourselves from blackness is actually why no one trusts. Why? Shh, about the damn struggle of the ambiguous when we constantly uphold the very violence of transraciality that enables some Kansas cracker to get a PhD in performing blackface. I, I don't understand what the fuck that means. That's just... That's someone who's paid, like... <laughs> I don't know. Probably a way more generous salary than they deserve to spout gibberish at a university <laughs> and be a TA. <clears throat> what what else what else does this college fix article talk about? So yeah, Vitolo Haddad resigned from a teaching assistant position and as co president of the Teaching Assistants Association at the public university. Vitolo Haddad has claimed Cuban, Ethiopian, North African, and Afro-Latinx lineage at various times. <laughs> Which, yeah, again, that's sort of like goofy, like Nick Fuentes-esque sort of thing. But I have a previous video of this human being from about three years ago. This was at a protest they were doing of Forbes talking. Some, some Forbes dude, I don't know, talking at the University of Madison. But we'll see if, we'll see what... This was a speech that Z gave. To debate, uh, so I wasn't originally going to come tonight because I was doing some stuff for uh, the CA 100 speech contest, which those of you who are undergrads may uh, remember fondly. Uh, it's a really good time. 
but so. Oh yeah, she was also like a debate team captain or something like that, or debate director, some, some sort of. We're here talking about capitalism, huh? And I... She's anti-capitalist, just openly BLM power, black power fist on the shirt, anti-capitalist Marxist commie. Check. I feel like a lot of you people have kind of come to support the cause. How many of you showed up because you kind of think capitalism is pretty tight, right? Like how many tight? of you think capitalism is tight? <laughs> depends. Yeah, what? Well, yeah, still it depends. I, I maintain that sort of ambivalence. Like it can be bad a lot of the time, and these days it seems to be kind of gator. One, two, three. Just look at Pride Month. We don't have anyone else who supports capitalism up in the house. They all went to the Forbes event. All went to the Forbes event. That's fair. Forbes. So, so yeah. the brief debriefing that uh, that I got so far was we came out, right? Uh, we had some speakers planned. We had some ideas planned. So we invited speakers to a, a to a public forum, right, where anyone could come. Uh, and then we disrupted them, right? We took speakers who were here, who had a schedule, who were invited to speak in this space, and we disrupted them. So that's something we're cool with then, right? Just because we got some speakers coming in the future who, uh, who I know are probably going to be disrupted. But we're cool with this, right? Y'all are good with the idea that you come to a protest and disrupt things? Yeah, hit me, hit me, hit me. What's good? Is this the first time it's ever happened? Because I remember Ben Shapiro was here. So yeah, to put this in context, he like a right wing sort of counter counter protest came to protest their protesting of the Forbes event. So this this dude's a right winger speaking up about the Ben Shapiro freak out event. Kind of. There's a minor interruption. <laughs> I feel that I feel that, but apparently this goes both ways, right? That's what I'm saying. We got interruptions going both ways. Is this the way we want to do discourse? Is this what we're feeling? It's not discourse when somebody lectures at you about how evil you are. That's it's not, not discourse when. Based? Someone lectures at you. So... Based? Yeah, so this is like three years prior to... Yeah, is, it, is this the way we want to do discourse? I wonder how CV has been talking about the riots. I wonder. Doesn't really seem to matter. This, like, left-on-left -left violence <laughs> seems to matter, I guess. Uh, Vitolo Haddad is actually white, and the family is from the Sicily region of Italy. I thought that was sort of ambiguous in and of itself, like the Italian aspect. I thought these SJ dubs were sort of quibbling about that definition. I generally consider Italians who ate, but this summer Vitolo Haddad described themselves as Italo Habesha. I'm surprised that College Fix is doing the gender neutral pronouns. That's that's uh, Italo Italo Habesha meaning of Italian and Eritrean or Ethiopian descent, according to Inside Higher Ed. So I love how things like this sort of throw it it throws a whole wrench into the idea that one is put upon or marginalized or oppressed by being a person of color because why are all these people particularly people that are like interested in power and influence, you know, people that are in the university setting, you know, why are they oftentimes pretending to be so-called of color, non-white. You know what I mean? It doesn't really make sense. I'm not the first person to point that out, but, you know, it's it's worth pointing out as many times as it happens. If it's so bad to be of color, then why are so many people pretending? But anyway, Z said, to my dear friends, loved ones, and organizing comrades. It's just open communists. That's what... Just comrades. Someone who's an open commie just being a teaching assistant and a director of debate at a major university. You know, no big deal. Uh, she put a Medium post up there apologizing, groveling, you know, to the people that are forcing her out of probably a pretty cushy position at the university. Um, I am so deeply sorry for the ways you are hurting right now because of me. What, how? You have expressed confusion, shock, betrayal, anger, and mistrust. All of those things are a consequence of how I have navigated our relationship and the spaces we share. Um, some very wrong turns. You know, all progressives do is lie 100% of the time, without exception. So just being progressive and Marxist, leftist, feminist, whatever, BLM supporting, Antifa supporting, that that's, all of those are wrong turns. But that's not what's being apologized for here lying, I guess, about being non-white? I, I don't know. Being vague and contradictory, uncertain, insecure. 
I am Southern Italian Sicilian. I am trying to make sense of my experiences with race. I grossly misstepped and placed myself in positions to be trusted on false premises. I went along with however people saw me. I over-identified with unreliable and unproven family history and latched on to anything I remembered growing up. Incredible amount of hurt for the Madison community, those I organized with, and everyone who has been exposed to this public reckoning. It was my choice and error to identify any differently Dude, this person is not genuine at all. I remember... So, CV is connected with the... Any viewers on my channel might remember the Scott McAuliffe... Uh, go home, buddy. The handsy guy that I encountered in Madison. She's buddies with that guy and made, like, mocking gestures about that and got a whole bunch of people to join in and say, go home, buddy, at me. You know, and they're probably part of the people that got me banned on various Twitters and big tech platforms. So all this like faux compassion that Zer Zimbabwe has for is claiming to have for like the POC community of Madison is very put on and very forced, you know, additionally, I want to apologize for how my failure to own up to these harmful decisions publicly made every conversation on social about the varied ways I've been racialized, a source of confusion and deception. I mean, you're mixed race, I guess. That's how I would accept whatever. I mean, <laughs> she pulled some sort of like Nick Fuentes maneuver to not to be meme like he does, not to be like a meme lord like he does, but to advance Zer self into the university system, <laughs> which is, again, I reiterate, ironic if we're going to go by the premise of, oh, you're oppressed if you're a minority. Well, then why are so many people vying for that checkbox? You know, it doesn't really make sense. Oh, okay, so the person that wrote this long-winded post that goes into, like, her social media history, that time I gave a really awkward interview. Oh, okay. So she was trying to play off, like, a Latinx identity right here. When your mom blames you for your dog needing surgery because you didn't burn enough cleansing sage to keep the pup safe from los malignos, bruja things, mom things, Latino ancestry. Is this like a sliver? Or what is this? It's like fake. Will you consider yourself? That question keeps me up at night. So it's just like living a lie, you know? Calling people an incel. All this goofy shit, man. This is These are the employees at universities, dude. These are the kind of people that put on masks and go fuck with people on the streets. But the person that wrote that post says, I made this post for the primary purpose of informing Blake communities about CV's behavior so that they make their own decisions about self-protection and whom to allow in their spaces. It's just whatever. Let's continue with this video. What's Forbes doing just, just to fully demonstrate that, you know, not only is this like a shapeshifter, like liar, like mask wearer, just a commie, you know, because of, so of course. Like, right now, is he lecturing at us? Because I feel like, what's uh, Charles Murray going to do in a couple weeks? Is he going to lecture at us? What, Charles Murray's coming? So what we're saying is that when people lecture at us, it's okay, because that's not discourse, to go in and interrupt them. That's the thing we're in favor of now. So when we go and we disrupt Charles Murray, you're going to be like, ride or die, baby. I'm about that life because that's a lecture. You're talking at me and I ain't here for that. Right? That's what you're saying? No, that's not what I'm saying. But... So then why is this okay? Do you think Charles Murray is going to come here? And he's yes. Going to, and, he's go and he's going to say that everybody who disagrees with him is partially responsible for, for murdering people. Baby, who called you hateful, huh? Does someone call you hateful? Hateful, yeah. So he's responding to like all the times that the left comes into the campus and you know the, the teachers will say that stuff like white people are all responsible for colonialism this and that and the other and antifa will violently sort of disrupt any event that speaks to the contrary of that message i think that's generally the point that he's getting at but 
Yeah, this publication and website. I do, uh, and I'm I'm actually that's fair. So capitalism ain't that bad. I don't know how. Do you all regularly read Forbes's publication and website? I do, uh, and I'm I'm actually a pretty big fan. Uh, but one thing that Forbes does pretty regularly on his site is that he has editors who talk about how violent capitalism is. Did you know that? Did you know that Forbes himself has a publication in which he discusses the violence of capitalism? So, so who is that an unbiased <laughs> interpretation? Doesn't think capitalism is violent. Anyone? Anyone still want to? All right. So that's why you're not at the Forbes event, right? Because you're like, man, that Forbes dude, he doesn't understand just how not violent capitalism is. He's not extreme enough for you. Is she trying to be like a charismatic leader meets like a lesbo sort of <laughs> like comedian, I guess? I don't know. Like, a, I don't know this. I'm definitely not going to go through the entirety of this half hour video. I don't even know why I because a lot of it's a back and forth between a lot of these libertarian college kids and the commie, but... He's not ride or die enough about capitalism for you. This is way more fun. So let's talk about this a little bit more. So, I grew up pretty privileged life. Uh, not always, but my parents kind of made it big when I was a kid. Pretty straight. Uh, they have a... Uh, my, my dad's basically Trump. He, like, has a real estate thing he's doing. He, like, kind of says a bunch of things without a lot of censorship, without a lot of thought. I love you, Dad, if you're watching this. Uh... Yeah, so it's very much like, why do all these commies with their raised Blake fists always, you know, and like shape shifting racial identity issues, why are they almost always bougie and upper crust? Like, that's always been perplexing to me. I don't know why that seems to always be the case, but it, it does. It almost always seems to be the case. But one thing that really always struck me growing up uh, and moving from kind of a not so great place 10 feet from the train tracks in South Florida to a really great neighborhood is that you kind of get to see both sides. Uh, now, do you all think that it's kind of cool that like some people have to live in poverty and struggle? Do we think that that's something that we should address collectively as a society? Yeah. What's up? What's your name, buddy? Because you're just like you're. It's just, I don't know. Yeah, they always get into it. But you know, all oh, the free market, blah, blah, blah. That's such a, you know, emotionally manipulative question and the right needs to do more of that obviously like i'm not even joking you know do you think that society should take care of people like yeah obviously they're gonna lead with something that's universally acceptable and bouncy seeming and fluffy sounding to get you to accept communism right and it's just unbelievably slippery and sleazy but anyway this is just sort of an interesting example of someone I kind of knew or was like encountering at protests and whatnot. I'll, I'll include some videos in the description if you want to watch them, and I'll include this the video I went over in the description if you want to watch the whole thing. Um, I just found it interesting that there was an example of the left eating their own involving CV because I've encountered this human being who definitely, in my experience, did nothing but lie like constantly. But uh, anyway, please subscribe and please give my subscribe star some love if you'd like to support the channel. Um, I will be making some more videos soon. But uh, also, click the bell. Because, you know, YouTube's not going to notify you.